Hi everyone, today I'm going right back to basics to show you how I make a simple granny square with four rounds. I use these squares a lot in my patterns and I am surprised that I haven't actually made a video tutorial for them yet. So today's the day, uh, especially since I've just published my new winter walk blanket and um, again it has lots of granny squares in it. There are lots of ways of making a granny square and you'll find loads of vid video tutorials on YouTube. But this is my way and um, I'm happy with it. It produces a nice straight edged, neat um, granny and um, I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, now the colours you see are what I'm going to use. They're all Stylecraft special and they are colours that I've taken from the Winter Walk Blanket. So they're, they're a little bit subdued maybe for a video tutorial, but if you're working on that particular pattern, you'll know exactly what I mean. So I'm going to, I'm using four colours for this and it's going to be a four round granny square. So I'm going to put these to one side just now. I'm also using a four millimetre crochet hook because the yarn is double knit or light worsted I think if you're in the US and that's a size G crochet hook again if you're in the US and you will need of course sharp scissors. Now I'm going to take it right back to basics as if you are starting to crochet for the first time and I'm aware that you just need to google granny square and you will find hundreds if not thousands of YouTube tutorials on how to make them but there are various methods and not everybody does the same thing so I thought since I'm using them in my blankets I'll show you the way I do it. So I'm going to take my first colour which is um, burgundy and the first thing you need to do is put a slip knot onto your hook to start working. Again, there are various methods of doing that, but my method is to just make a loop like that. And then this is the working yarn. Just put it at the back of the loop and pull it through on my hook. And there's my slip knot. And now you're ready to start crocheting. We want to make a circle first that the first round of stitches will be worked into. There are, again, a couple of methods of doing it, and I'm going to show you the way I always do it. But some of you will prefer to use what's called a magic circle. That is not my preferred method, so I'm not going to show you it here. I'm just going to show you the way I do it. And to do this, I'm going to chain four which is just a case of putting your yarn over the hook and pulling it through the, the loop. Put the yarn over the hook and pull it through the loop. That's two. Yarn over the hook, pull it through the loop. Three and again, four. So that's four chains. You can see that I haven't chained them really tightly. You want to try and get a fairly even tension so very often when you start off, your tension can be quite tight. So just try to work a little bit looser to get an even tension. And then we're going to turn this chain of four into a circle. So we need to join the circle up by going into the very first chain that we made and putting the yarn over and pulling it through that first chain and the second one or the last one, sorry. And as you can see, if I try to lay that down, maybe my scissors will help. It's difficult with the dark yarn, but if I open it up, yeah, if I hold it to the camera and open it up, you can see that that has formed a circle with a space in the middle. And that's the space that we're going to be working our stitches into. Okay, so we need to start making um, blocks of three stitches and they're going to be separated with two chains and that's going to form a square, the first round. 
So the first thing we want to do is get our yarn from where it is, right at the bottom, up to the height of the stitches you're going to be making. And to do that, we're going to chain two. So you've now got a circle with a straight um, chain of two. Our yarn is now up at the top and we can make our first stitch, which is a treble stitch, or if you're in the US, a double crochet. So it's yarn over, put your hook. Now it's quite difficult to find that loop. There we go. Pull it apart to find the loop, the hook, the space. Can't get the words out today. Put your hook in, yarn over again, and pull it through that loop. And you've now got three loops on your hook. You just need to yarn over and pull through the first two of these loops. And then you've got two left. And then yarn over again and pull through the last two. And that is a treble crochet stitch. Or in US terms, double crochet. We're going to be making blocks of three of these treble crochet stitches and they're called treble clusters. The first chain two that you made is going to count as the first treble stitch. So we're not going to, in this first block, we've actually made two stitches. So we just need to make one more treble crochet stitch. And that's our first side of the square done. So you can see that it's, it's not, it doesn't look like a square at all yet, but it will get there. Now we have to make a corner and to do that, we're going to chain two. And then three treble stitches, one, two, Three. Remember, it's yarn over, put your hook in, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So now we've got three stitches, which includes the first chain two, chain two and three stitches. So we chain two again and three more trebles in that centre space. And then chain two for our next corner. And you can check and see how many sides you've got to your square so far. We've got one, two, three, and we're ready to put the fourth one in. So that's three more trebles. And the final chain two is the final corner. One, two, and now you want to go back to where you started. You can see the two treble stitches there and there. And here is your first chain two. And what you want to do is find the very first, the very top of that first chain two. Put your hook in and pull through and pull through. And that has um, attached all four sides of round one. And we're going to change colour now so you can cut that, leaving a tail. And I just loop it over my hook and pull it through. And there is round one. There's a big centre hole at the moment, but that will get closed up when we sew in the tails. Because you can see there's a tail to sew in. Now. My next job is to take my next colour, which is this camel colour, and I'm going to turn my little square over so it's upside down or reverse side up. And I'm going to turn my rounds after each round, I'm going to turn them over. And that helps to keep the square nice and square. It doesn't start to twist. So we want to attach the yarn in a corner you can see that there are one, two, three, four spaces. These are called the corner spaces. 
So I'm going to put my hook in and I, I usually prefer to start in one of the corners that's not where I've started and finished. So it balances it better. So I'm going to put my hook into that corner and I'm going to pull through my new colour. Now the way I attach it is I then put both ends, you can see I've got the short end and the long end, and put both ends over my hook and pull them through. So now that there are there are two um, loops on your hook, but you don't actually need to. So I'm going to then just identify the one that's got the short end and pull it out. And that's me started. I've got my first, um, I've got my yarn attached into that corner. And I'm going to do what I did right at the beginning and chain two, which is the equivalent of the first treble stitch. So then I'm going to put two treble stitches into that corner space. Remember, we're working in clusters of three stitches. So we're off and running on the second round. Now that is only half of a corner. We're going to work our way round and then when we come back to this point, we'll finish this corner off. So yarn over and find the next corner space, which is here, and make a treble stitch and another and another. So we've got three treble stitches. You can see how it's forming a straight line now. We've got a corner to make, so it's chain two. And we've come round the corner ready to go along this side. So we finish it off with three treble stitches in that same corner space. And there you can see how it is forming a right angle. Straight to the next corner and three half trebles. chain two and then we finish that corner with three more half trebles. Going a little bit faster now but I'll stop every so often to let you see what it looks like. So we've now done half of a corner, a full corner, a full corner. So we've got another full corner to do. You can just push these ends out of the way and three trebles. Remember that's double crochet in US terms. One, two corner, two chains for the corner, three trebles all working into that corner space. So we've now done three complete corners and we've got to finish this first one off. And so we just jump over to it, put in the first treble, and the second and third. And then we've just got to put in our two chains to form that nice right angle. And then look for the top of the first chain two, pull your yarn through and through again. And that's right two finished. So again, we'll cut the yarn and pull it through. We were collecting a fine bunch of tails to sew in. Turn it over once more and take the next colour, which is warm grey. It's a kind of greeny grey. I really, I really like this colour. And I'm going to attach it in a corner, but not the one that I have finished. Any one, it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to pick this one up and attach my yarn again in the same way. So pull through the yarn, put both ends over the hook and pull them through and then identify the short one and pull it out. Everybody has their own method and this is the way I've always done it. Chain two, we're just doing the same thing again. Chain two, and that's the first treble, so we count two more trebles in that corner, like so. 
And then this time, because we've got bigger, we've actually got a space in the middle before we get to this corner. So we're going to put three treble stitches into that space. Because our, the length of our sides is increasing by one space after every round. So that's what makes the granny square grow. So we've got to our first full corner to make. Chain two for the corner, three trebles in the corner. So granny clusters are simply clusters of three treble stitches. And you can make them into squares or stripes. They're very handy and they're great for changing colours to give you a, a nice um, a variety of colours in a project. So that was our middle one. And again, push these out of the way. And then three trebles. Some people will be looking at this and saying, yeah, but I put a chain between my treble clusters. The only chains I put in on in a granny square are the two chains in the corner. Some people would maybe chain one before they move to this space, but I prefer my uh, granny squares to be a bit firmer. If you chain one between the clusters, you end up with a, a more open granny square. So I'm almost round. I've got one more full corner to make. Treble three. Chain two, treble three. And then the final middle space with three trebles. Sorry, my yarn has decided to walk across the floor. Three trebles. And there you can see we're almost finished round three. So we just need to go into that first corner again and put one, two, three trebles into that first corner, chain two, and slip stitch into the top of the first chain two and pull your yarn. That's a tight one, pull it through. And that's round three finished. So we're just, I'm just going to do one more round and I'm going to turn this over again. Uh, there we go, that's three rounds. We've got one more round to do in mocha and uh, I'm just going to check my colours and then I'll be back in just a second. Right, okay, I'm back and I've got my mocha yarn for the next colour. Um, as usual, we just start in any corner which hasn't the one that you finished in and make the uh, attach the yarn and I'm just going to find my last you know my short end there we go chain two and two treble stitches and just in case you've forgotten it's yarn over put your hook into the space pull up a loop so that you've got three loops on your hook yarn over pull through two of them and yarn over and pull through two of them. There we go. Now, the only difference about the f this fourth round is that there are now two spaces in the middle before we get to the corner. So it's one, two, and three clusters, three treble stitches for each cluster in each space. So there's one group of three treble stitches and a second, the next space along. And then 
we just have to work around. I'm not going to say too much as I work around this because I think by now you're pretty much um, on the way of knowing what to do. Three trebles, chain two for the corner and three trebles. And then our two middle spaces, three trebles in each. I'll go a little bit faster now. There we go, you can see what's how it's coming. You could actually make a full blanket by just making your rounds bigger every time. It doesn't need to be a four round granny square, it could be um, much, much bigger and again, much, much smaller because very often in my patterns, I will do what I call mini grannies and mini grannies are simply the very first round, this one of um, your granny square and then you stop at that point. And in my um, latest pattern, the winter watt blanket, I do have a round where I've got f a five round, a, a, a round going round my blanket with um, a variety of different squares, all five round in, and in different colours. So you can make it any size you like, but as, just turn your um, square over after each round and uh, I'll show you uh, how straight it looks when you get to the end. So that's almost finished. Chain two, three trebles. And two more spaces with three trebles in each and I've got a tangle. That was an easy one to unravel. One, two, three, and the last middle space. That's one, two, three, and then we're at the very last or first corner, first and fourth, if you like. So it's just got to finish that off with one, two, three, and chain two, and of course. You can all shout it out. We need to just slip stitch into the top of the first chain two, pull your yarn through and pull it through the loop. And then we can cut that and our square is finished. There we go. It looks a bit of a mess just now with all these ends and Matt's going, I'm going to come back in just a second and show you how to sort these out and get rid of them because I always recommend that when you're making a bundle of granny squares for a blanket or whatever, tidy up your ends before you move on to the next square. It's much better in the long run. So I'm going to just pull these through. This side that I've just finished working on is the reverse side because I always turn my square over after each round. So it's been turned over and this last uh, mocha coloured round is on its wrong side. That's how I will be attaching my squares. They'll be this way up when I'm attaching them to my blankets. So for me, this is the front. And with that in mind, I'm going to just pop my hook through from the back and pull any of these ends which are on the front through to the back. That will let you see actually before I, I, I come back to sew them in, I'll just tuck them out of sight just now and that'll give you a better, I'll twist these round and tuck them out of sight and that will let you see what 
the granny square looks like finished. Nice and straight edges, no, it's not squint at all and um, we're ready to move on to the next one once the ends have been sewn in. So I'll be back in a minute to show you how to do that. So this is part two of this little video and it's time to get rid of all these ends. Um, lots of people, um, <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna laugh at this, lots of people hate sewing in ends. They see it as an, a chore that has to be done and very often they leave it until the last minute and they've got hundreds if not thousands to do all at once. That is a chore. But uh, as I said before, I like to get rid of these ends while I've just done one square and then move on to the next square. So you need uh, a needle that's got a nice big eye. That means that it's going to be easy to thread the yarn into because you don't want to have a any old needle that's maybe got an eye that's too small and then that turns it into a chore trying to um, thread it. The way I thread a needle is I just take my piece of yarn and bend it very, very tightly over my needle and then pull the needle out so that I've got this very push together loop between my thumb and forefinger and then I just press the needle. You can see how tight I'm pushing that together and then I just push the needle down over the top of that and it springs through. Right, so I've threaded the very first tail. That was the one where we made the circle for the first round and that's the one we're going to start with. If, like, I had, like I said, I've pulled everything through to the wrong side and what I'm going to do is just push my needle between the stitches. You can see that it's not coming through to the other side so it's sitting in the middle of the stitches and I'm just, I'm not going to pull anything tight at this point. I'm just going roughly around the perimeter of that centre circle and when I've got back to where I start started I'm just going to then give it a really good tug and you see just how tightly that circle closes up. Now, of course, with that, it will just open up again. It's not, there's not anything holding this yarn from um, springing loose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, where I've come through, you can see here that I've come through at this point, I'm going to go back a couple of stitches and then work in the opposite direction through the crochet back round again just pulling tight each time and then I'm just going to put part of it again in a third direction and that will hold it and the next thing to do is to pull your yarn tight and Clip it close, but not that you're going to cut your stitches. Clip it close. If you've pulled it up tight, it will then spring back and disappear into the crochet. So that was the first tail. I can thread up my second one. And this time I'm going to weave it through the stitches in one direction but I'm not going to pull it as tight as that first one obviously it was the one that we needed to pull to close up the center hole I'm just going to come back and to pick up a little stitch so that I don't come pull my yarn back out again come back through and yep I'm going to say do it a third time because that just makes absolutely sure and if you like you can attempt to pierce some of the stitches on the back as well all that helps to um, make sure that it's going to stay put so that's the center and i just need to work around with the others again weaving it through some of the stitches 
on the back and back in the opposite direction. And if you feel inclined as I would, give it an extra. Pull it up quite tight and cut it. I tend to uh, use odd moments, you know, if I've uh, been crocheting, I might just take a minute to, to sew in the end when I'm, you know, waiting on a kettle boiling, for example, that kind of thing. It's very useful to wait to use up odd moments. And you can see that I've still got the warm grey and also the mocha to finish off. And the other thing I want to just mention is that when you're finishing off a tail, do try to weave it through its own colour. So I'm using the granny clusters that are that colour to weave through rather than... Uh, for example, the camel, because your warm grey would maybe just show up if you worked it through that. Okay. I'll change direction now and again so you don't end up with a, a lump of um, woven in yarn in the one place. And I've just got two left, so I'm going to do the second last one in the mocha. And that's going to weave through there. I know that I have a, a friend on um, uh, social media called um, Anita and her her name, her Instagram name is made by Anita. And I know that she has a method of um, making granny squares where you don't need to sew in, sew in the tail. So you can go and search that out. I think she makes her granny squares in exactly the same way as I do, turning each time. So you could check out her video. It's made by Anita if you want to try doing uh, granny squares where you don't need to sew in the ends. But, um, you know, I've just stuck with the old tried and true method. I tend to come, when I'm doing the outside one, I come straight down from that stitch so that I'm not working along here because that can sometimes um, muddle up these spaces when you're coming to join. So I come at, at right angles to uh, the, the edge to finish it off. There we go, that's the third way. And I can cut that and we're finished. That wasn't so bad. So there is the granny square complete and it's all neatly finished off on the wrong side. And if you were making a pile for one of my blanket patterns, I suggest that you make them up like that. You have them this way up with the, the last side wrong side upwards and then spear them. I don't actually have my knitting needle here, do I? No, but I spear them onto a knitting needle um, into, you'll see that further on in the pattern, onto what I call a yarn kebab. And that keeps them all in order and the right way up, ready to join them to the blanket. So that is uh, quite a good tip to remember. So that's the granny square. I hope that has helped, especially if you are a beginner to crochet. Bye for now.